Good morning, everybody. Um, just wanted to take this uh, this opportunity here this morning uh, to provide an update on uh, on John Tavares uh, following the incident in the first period of Game One uh, against Montreal. Um, as everybody, of course, saw, John was uh, stretched off the ice uh, and transported along with our medical director, Dr. Noah Foreman, uh, to St. Michael's Hospital in downtown Toronto. Um, once at St. Michael's, John uh, received a CT scan, MRI, and uh, along with Dr. Foreman, uh, was consulted um, with the uh, lead neurosurgeon and neuroradiologist at St. Michael's Hospital, and uh, thankfully cleared of all um, structural damage to his head, neck, and spine, uh, which was obviously a major concern at the time of incident. So we're thankful for that. Um, John uh, was admitted overnight to the hospital for observation uh, and was discharged yesterday morning and returned home um, with Dr. Foreman and, um, and has been with his family uh, since then and um, under the close watch and uh, medical care of Dr. Foreman and our staff here. Um, John was diagnosed with a concussion and uh, also sustained a knee injury on the play. It's a similar injury to the one sustained by Zach Hyman uh, in Vancouver um, in the regular season. Um, be a minimum of two weeks with that. Um, but obviously our primary concern is the concussion and, and um, making sure that uh, he returns to full health. Um, but on that note, I think we just want to thank, um, for certainly first and foremost, our medical team here led by Dr. Noah Foreman and uh, Dr. John Theodopoulos and Paul Ayotte for their immediate care to John on the ice. Uh, in addition to the paramedics on site, um, the physicians and um, the neuro uh, surgery team at at St. Michael's uh, Hospital and the Montreal Canadiens medical staff who came right onto the ice to uh, to assist John and our medical staff. Um, so that is the update on um, on John's medical situation and um, been in close touch with him. He's resting at home uh, and recovering for that we're thankful. Beyond that, I just want to also thank the NHL, all the teams, the NHL that have reached out, including very many, many different players. After seeing the incident, different general managers, mostly every NHL team we've heard from, I think it just shows the type of league that we're in. The league office itself was uh, in touch right away. And um, I think we're, it just kind of shows the type of community that hockey is and especially the support of the Montreal Canadiens, their players and staff throughout. It's been pretty remarkable considering that we're in the middle of a playoff series against them. And it's also been in, very moving to see fans of all other teams uh, in their support of John um, and his health. So moving forward, uh, I think our focus is on um, John's health and recovery and, and uh, game two of this series and moving forward. But we just wanted to provide an update there today. And um, having said that, we'll open it up for... Um, for a few questions before we turn it back over to the players and coaches to roll on here. Thanks, Kyle. First up, we'll go to Chris Johnston, Sportsnet. Go ahead, Chris. Hi, Kyle. Good morning. Understanding that uh, John's immediate health is what's most important here, I'm just wondering, is there any thought yet on if he might return on these playoffs or anything like that? Any discussion about a return to play? I think the knee injury you can you can give a timeline on, but the head injury um, and concussion, I think it's very difficult, Chris, to place a timeline on, on when someone's going to return from that. We handle those in a very conservative nature um, and handle them very sensitively. So um, we will follow the protocols to a T with that. Um, we can't replace that element with, uh, with John and can't repair it. So we have to, uh, we have to be very careful and, and keep in mind, he's a, you know, he's got a young family and, and there's an onus on us to protect uh, him and his future in that regard. So uh, we'll follow the protocols and the NHL concussion protocol and, consult closely with uh, with John and the experts in the field and and then proceed from there. Next up, we'll go to Lance Hornby, Toronto Sun. Go ahead, Lance. Uh, Kyle, the TV cameras uh, caught you obviously in a state of concern when you saw John going out. What was going through your mind at that time? Uh, unfortunately, Lance, uh, you know, we've had I think in the last 15 months or 18 months uh, between Ilya Mikheyev, Jake Muzzin and John um, sort of situations like that, that are, um, I would say emergency situations on the ice, you know, Mikheyev with severing uh, an artery uh, and tendon, uh, tendons, and then Jake obviously with the spinal um, issue and, and injury against Columbus in game two and so in John's yesterday. And I think the thing that goes through my mind always, Lance, in those situations is that, um, 
you know, there, in all three of them, we haven't, we've been there, we were either on the road in, in Newark or we were at home, but with no fans. So the player's family isn't there. And I think, you know, they need someone to be the conduit between them. Our medical staff, our players and coaches are in the game. Our medical staff is, is attending to, um, you know, an emergency situation. So I think I would never want the families, I mean, just think about my own family. If something had happened to me, I would never want them to be um, unaware of what was happening. And so it's getting down, obviously you care about the player deeply um, and, and what their status is, but also to be able to provide updates to the player's family um, in, in all three cases, their, their partners and um, in Jake and, and John's case, they have children as well, young children. So um, they're watching that from home and seeing it with, with, and, and it's very helpless. So like immediately you, you wanna make sure that we're doing everything we can to, to provide an update to them and, and also to be there to support the medical staff and, and the player uh, as things are happening frantically. And last question here, we'll go to Mark Masters, TSN. Go ahead, Mark. Kyle, what's your sense of how the group is, is responding after that, that tough moment uh, in game one? What are you sensing from the group? Uh, you know, Mark, I think it's, it's, I think because of who John is and, and, you know, the level of respect that it, not just our group has, but other players do they got, I mean, we've, we've had these types of situations and I, I mean, I, I don't know if it was the nature of it. Um, you know, the, the number of people who were watching and what it was, but the outpouring of support has been remarkable for John. And, um, you know, I think the, the players and, and staff have done as, as best they can, I think, especially after knowing that, um, you know, there, there weren't any structural uh, injuries sustained to his, you know, neck and spine, um, you know, in the last couple of days, I, I think that they've, they're doing as well as they, they can be supporting one another. And we're trying to support them as best we can and, and be able to uh, proceed from there. But I think these things are tough because these are athletes that I think a lot of people view as, um, you know, that, that they're, they're difficult to knock down. They're difficult to keep out and to see, you know, something in a completely accidental freak situation like that happen. I think it makes everybody feel vulnerable, um, especially the players who play the game and they're big, strong young guys. And, and, you know, you don't ever imagine being in that situation. So I think it, it gives a sense of vulnerability to not only the players on our team, but both teams and throughout the league. And, and um, those are tough things I think always to handle uh, when you see that. And um, I think as, as with everything after a moment of trauma, there's uh, some trepidation and, and things sort of slowly start to return back to, to normal. But um, I think our, our guys are handling it as well as possible.